Hello future winners! Today is Sunday. That means that we are looking at amazing chess studies. We hope you'll enjoy. Let's start. In first position, white should make a draw. We see that black is having dangerous pawns, but it is possible to stop them. And here is how. White should play rook e3. He is attacking this pawn. That's why black needs to play d2 to threaten d1 queen. And here's the point. Right move in this position is rook e4 to let him promote his pawn. And the point is that after queen d1, white can play rook e1 and black can take because of stalemate. So white doesn't have any square to go. So it's a draw. Black can try something, and that is to play knight f5 to prevent this square for rook. But then white can play rook e2. And after d1 queen, rook h2 check. And after king g1, again one interesting move, rook h1. Of course, black must take, and then it's still mate again. So incredible. So that's how from this position, white succeeded in making a draw. Let's move to the second one. Today all games are incredible draws. So here's the second one. How can white make a draw? He should play king d5. And it is very important not to play a4 because it's lost. After king c8, a5, king b7. And that's a problem that this knight doesn't have a move. And he can try to play knight b6, but then bishop b6, of course, not pawn plays b6, because with only one bishop, it's simply draw. Takes, and now taking with pawn, and it's one position for black. So that's why a4 is not an option. So king d5, a very important move. King d7. And after something like king e8, we can play uh, king c6. So this is the only move. a4, a5. He is trying to use our knight on a8. But we are going to give it anyway. King c4, king c6, and here's the trick. Knight c7. What a move. In last game we gave it for peace, but here we gave it for totally free. Black took it, of course. King b5, and it's important that we are attacking pawn on a5. So black needs to protect it, of course with bishop d6. King a6. And what can black do? If he moves his king anywhere, we can take a bishop. But if he moves his bishop, we will take pawn. So he doesn't have any other move than to play king c6. And it's still made. We achieved our drawish position. Let's move to the third one fast. Third one is one very famous position, and you should know it. It's made by red. You wouldn't believe, but white can make a draw, even if this pawn is threatening to promote, and white king is on f8. But here is why. King e7. So our king is far away, and we are not promoting our pawn. g5. And logical, 
is to play king f6. It's not helping, it's losing obviously, but we are playing king d6 and we will succeed to capture this pawn on g5. Unbelievable. g4, e7. And the black must play bishop b5. But just to mention that we can play king c5 because of g3 and this square is not possible for black to protect this pawn. So e7, bishop h5. So we didn't do much, but e7, and now there's no h5 square for black's bishop, so he must play bishop b5, but then, again, not king e5, but king c5. And we are attacking this bishop, so he can play something like g3, because we can take bishop, and after g2, queen, queen, and it's simply a draw. That's why he needs to move his bishop. But let's move it to the safest square. That's e8. But then, king d4, and we are on time to capture this pawn. Now is that square rule, and we are here. So it's obviously a draw. King b7, for example. King e4, king c7, king f4, and it's a draw. That's it for today. We hope you liked those studies, and especially last one is important one for your chess career, because it's chess classic. Subscribe to our channel, and see you next week.